Y'all are so blessed and lucky today. Y'all just don't know how blessed you are. Uh, we have a number of baptisms to do this morning. Uh, we have baby dedication we're doing this morning. Um, and the good thing is, I may not preach that long. Hallelujah. <laughs> You do realize I did use the word may, correct? <laughs> I didn't say that I would, but it, it may, and anything could happen, amen? Uh, so what we're going to try to do is, today is the day of celebration. Also, my back is still out, so you're not going to see me running up and down the road getting crazy. I'm going to have help today doing baptisms. Uh, believe it or not, for the people that are getting baptized, today is your lucky day. The heater is working on the water, <laughs> all right? So... The only thing that we, we have an off and on switch, so we don't know if you're going to look like crawfish when you get out of the water or not, but one way or the other, it's going to be done. Uh, I say that in jest this morning, but I want to also share something with you right now. Everybody knows about a lot of things that are happening in the community today. A lot of people are talking about the COVID-19 and the numbers going up and stuff like that. I need to share this with you out of my heart. It's one of those things. Um, how many of you are frustrated with all this stuff? Raise your hands. How many of you are tired of it? Yeah. Right. The reality is, is something that we're having to deal with. Uh, we have a rise that is coming up. And so over the next couple of days or so on Wednesday, I'm going to ask if we can have a leadership team meeting up here on Wednesday evening so we can sit down and talk about it because I want to make sure that uh, we're following protocol. We're looking at things uh, the correct way. We want to make sure that everybody's protected the best that we can. And as I was reading my scripture this morning in Psalms 145, it says, in starting in verses 13, it says, The Lord is faithful to all of his promises and loving toward all he has made. The Lord upholds all of those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all who look to you and give, their, give them their food. To the proper time, you open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all of his ways and loving toward all that he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him and to all who call him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him and he hears the cries and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. How many of you know that if you just speak truth, you have nothing to worry about? Uh, when you look at the opportunity of seeing what life is about, even in the midst of hardships, what does Jesus say that he would never leave you nor forsake you? Amen? Ain't that a great thing or a great word to have in the midst of times and troubles that he would never neither leave you nor forsake you? So guys, let's praise his holy name this morning. Let's lift him up like there is no tomorrow, like today is the only day that we got to do it. And I promise if you do, you'll find Jesus right where you're looking for him. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we just thank you that, Lord, as we look to you, you are a holy God. Father, we thank you that, Lord, as you've blessed us continuously, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name that, Father, that you would continue sharing your presence with us. Lord, we pray that not only over this church congregation, but, Lord, we pray over this uh, city, this county, this, uh, this state, and this nation. Father, we pray over every place that's, uh, that your presence goes, that, Lord, that as you go forth, that, Father, people's hearts would be changed. Father, I pray that today would be a day where salvations would ring forth and rededications. And Father, people drawing closer to you, Father, would just shout out that, Lord, they need you. And so, Father, as we look for you this morning, Father, we thank you that, Lord, we've already found you here. Your presence is here. Wherever your church people are at, wherever your chosen people are at, there you are also. So, Lord, we love you. We praise you, Lord. We ask that you would receive our worship here this morning. That, Lord, that you would look down upon this place with pleasure. That, Father, that you would open up the gates of heaven. That, Lord, that you would allow the heavenly choir to come join us here this morning. So, Lord, we love you. We praise you. And, Lord, we thank you that your spirit is not only moving in this church, but, Lord, in every church in Nacogdoches County that preaches the true gospel of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we love you and we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. All God's people said? Amen. This question. This question. Well, good morning, Impact Cowboy Church. We got a got a little something something special we're gonna we want to do uh, before we get this party started. You there in the black shirts and the long wavy blonde hair, JC? Come on, stand up here up front. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. So. 
look out, y'all. We're gonna sing happy birthday to this Jason. Wait, we got pictures. Is that the only picture we got? But wait, there's more! Yes. Yes. We got more, or is that it? That's it. That's it. So we got we got this beautiful young lady here. We're proud of you and what God's doing in your life. We just want to celebrate your life today and wish you a happy birthday. So I'm gonna I'm gonna crank out my, my happy birthday. <laughs>
Proclaim, Father, because you live, Father, we thank you that, Lord, in Jesus' name, we do not worship a dead Savior, Lord, we worship a risen Savior. And so, Father, because he overcame the grave, because he overcame the enemy, Lord, and he took the captives uh, and set them free, Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name, the Lord, he's setting everyone who calls upon the name of Jesus Christ free. So, Lord, we praise you this morning. Lord, we ask that, Father, that your pleasure, your presence, and your power be in this place. And the Lord, we ask that every word that be said today, Father, everything to be done always be to your glory, to your credit, and to your honor. In Jesus' mighty name. All God's people said. Amen. All right, guys. Have we got any visitors with us this morning? Anybody that's never ever been to Impact Cowboy Church before, if you just raise your hand, we'd like to get you some visitors' cards. Tell you how much we appreciate you. Being here this morning? Oh, we weren't going to be that? Oh, okay. Forget about that. Right. Raise your hand and let everybody see you one more time. <laughs> We're doing the COVID-19 field here. I'm bad this morning. But 
Well, you know, I got a little bit of an excuse. Got up yesterday morning, took a shower, and was getting ready, and I went to put on my glasses. And you know how you just kind of stick them like this? Well, my glasses that I hadn't had all that long broke right dead in the center. <laughs> and luckily, I was able to retrieve my old hair. And so y'all might not look quite as pretty as normally y'all do, but we can see a little bit. It's just two of you now. Anyway, and then of course, the eye doctors are all closed on Saturdays now, so we couldn't go get new frames. So we have to do that in the morning. So there's always something, but you know, no matter how bad the devil wants to try to get us down, he ain't gonna do it. We still gonna laugh at him. We still gonna praise the Lord. So he is worthy to be praised. And we don't have a whole lot of mouth. How many in here can read? Raise your hand. I mean, no, I'm serious. How many can read? Man, I thought there'd be more of y'all than that. I thought y'all had been reading all these mouths so I wouldn't have to say it. But anyway, this wasn't the thing anyway, was it? Oh, Raven Island Sunday School class. Well, it's already happened this morning, but you can make it next Sunday morning. And that's for Jesse. He'll have to do that. Your address, please. Anyway, I have just sent out a message to you, all of y'all that's involved with the Financial Peace University, that we would be starting back up Wednesday night. But discard that. We are not going to start back up with the Financial Peace University right at this time. Uh, we will be having a meeting on Wednesday night and we will find out what we're going to do here. And when we get some more numbers and information from the higher ups, I guess you'd say. So anyway, it's good to see each and every one of y'all in here this morning. Well, good morning, Impact Cowboy Church. Yeah. Good to see all smiling faces today. Man, so June 21st, 10th. We got old one, don't we? This is 21st. They got 21st, dude. That was in You got a reason. feel about that. Jesse Sneed, Tides and Offerings. There it is. $3,676. General fund three thousand four hundred fifty-six dollars. Mortgage note two hundred twenty. We are getting that mortgage paid down. Now, and I, I, I try to say this every Sunday. Just to be clear, we're not just taking your money. Pastor Stan will tell you he ain't banking. <laughs> we're 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 using your tithes and your offerings to further God's kingdom. We did Mission Mac last week. I'm sure some of it went towards that. We've got all kinds of ministries here. It goes towards that. Y'all like the air conditioning you're sitting in? It goes towards that. Also, it's 100% obedience to God. Because without your tithes and offerings, we can't have this stuff. We can't have a gathering place in the air conditioning, sitting in comfortable chairs. So it's not just lying in somebody's pocket at all. It's to further God's kingdom. And we can do that with the $3,676. So let's pray and thank God for that. Lord Jesus, God, thank you for the people who are obedient and gave their tithes and their offerings. Lord, we don't want to give out of fear. We don't want to give out of, you know, well, I guess we better just do it. Lord, you said to do it because you want to bless us. And Lord, you've proven that to me in my life and so many others. So we just take this offering and we want to we want to give it to you, God. Place it at your feet and say, here it is, Lord. Do what you want to do with it. In Jesus' name, thank you, God, for this church. Thank you, God, for everyone who showed up this morning. I pray you blessings upon blessings and favor upon favor on everyone in here. In Jesus' name, thank you, God, for Pastor Stan. Lord, I want to pray for his back. God, and anyone else in here who's having pain. I've got a pain in my elbow that I've had for a couple months now. I'm tired of this mess. Lord, I just want... Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we just pray against the pain in Jesus' name. 
But nevertheless, not our will, but yours be done. We love you, God, and thank you, Lord, for all the good things you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We have got a baby dedication we're fixing to do here this morning. Um, today I told you we got baby dedications and we got baptisms. Um, one of the interesting things while they're making it up here, I get a chance, I've been bragging on my staff quite a bit lately. Uh, Jesse, and not to exclude you, Brenda, but today is a day where I'm having to really uh, put a lot of emphasis on uh, this young man right here. And one of the things I want to share with is he's been going through his seminary classes. Uh, he is almost there. He's almost finished the last class. He's going through the test. He's coming up right around the corner. Dun, dun, dun. And so Jesse will be ordained here in the next, say, month or two months or so. And so today, not only is he helping me with baby dedications, but he's also helping me with baptisms. Uh, mm -hmm. goes with my back being out. How many of you know it's good to have staff that you can turn to and have help? Amen? Mm -hmm. But one of the things I want to talk about is today's message is all about maturity as a part of worship. And, you know, to be mature means that you start off in a starting line and then you finish a race. And the unfortunate part about maturity and the Lord is we never finish the line, we never cross the finish line while we're still living. Amen. So while we're here, regardless of how old you are, there is a maturity level base that we go through. And as we get to this point where we mature, I don't know about y'all, but I, I'm seeing more silver hair coming into my head nowadays. I uh, did a video this week and I looked up there and I said, well, you got to shine, okay? But I saw this change, and I thought, you know, I'm not 20 anymore. But you know what? I'm a better person at 20 than I was, or a better person at 52 than I was at 20. Amen? And so I want to brag on this couple that's coming here right now. They're bringing this baby up uh, to be dedicated. Can you hand me the microphone so you can introduce this young lady? Mr. Jason is also getting baptized here in just a little bit, so when you look at him and you see he's in shorts, uh, that's the reason why. He's fixing to go swimming here in a few minutes. And his wife actually paid us an extra 20 bucks to hold him down to the bubbles. Put him down there, okay? So stick around. He's fixing to be a rodeo over there for the baptisms. Would you like to introduce your daughter to us? And, you know, this is Millie Noel Reese hyphenated Pilchy. Two last names. <laughs> She is six months old. We're going to dedicate her to the Lord. I feel like hee haw. Everybody ought to say, salute. Amen. <laughs> well, when I see this little baby, she every time I see her, she's always looking up at me. She's always smiling. Uh, she's probably really nice because I'm so ugly that, you know, we're having to turn around and deal with this. But at six months of age, how many of you know she's a perfect age to say, Lord, this is your child? You use them how you desire to be able to call forth with the anointing at this age. So, Miss Millie, we are so thankful to have you. And as we dedicate this baby, this is a two-part process, okay? The first part is, is that I'm asking you as parents uh, to be able to, to raise this child up, that you would teach her the ways of the Lord, teach her the word of the Lord, make sure she knows her, her ABCs of faith, so to speak, Know that what her faith is all about. That's right. And make sure that she understands who Jesus is in her life. But also the second part is as a congregation to be able to hold them accountable, to be able to let them know that you're there to support them. How many of you know it takes a village to raise a baby sometimes? If you don't believe that, ask about grandparents and babysit. How many of you are thankful that you've had grandparents to babysit for you so you can go out and have a night out? But you know the church family is there to support one another, to encourage one another, to help. And how many of you know we don't always have the answers for everything, right? So I'm going to ask you to part for them, and I'm also going to ask a part for y'all that y'all will be able to uh, agree to help them. So I have to ask you, as the leader of the family, my heart is so proud of you this morning. Right? I can't tell you how thrilled I am to see you answer the call of God in your life, in the life of your family. That you would stand before the Lord and say, I am the leader of this family. And therefore, I'm going to make sure that my house is protected, that the blood of Christ is over the doorway of my household. I am so thrilled. I know your other child has already been dedicated, and I know that you're married, and you're happy, and you're growing, and everything's happening, and your marriage is getting better day by day. Amen? How many of you know to be able to grow in Christ means that the next day is always going to be hopefully better than it was yesterday? So as we anoint, and as we bless this child, I'm going to ask you, 
Do you agree to be able to raise this child in the ways of the Lord? Yes, sir. Do you agree to be able to make sure to support them, to encourage them, to pray for them, to be able to touch them, to be able to bless them, and to pray for them? Yes, sir. Mama, do you agree to always love this child, to be able to stick in the, in the process when he's not there, to be able to take up your side, to be able to love and nurture and take this child to the places only the Lord can bring him? this child. I believe there's an anointing on this child, that this child is going to be full of joy, full of peace, full of hope, and as we do so, we all agree to always bring this to the child, or to bring this child to the Lord in every problem that comes. Congregation, I'm asking you, as church members here, uh, somebody asked me here a while back, what does it take to be a church member at Impact Cowboy Church? Show up. Attend. Tithe, participate, be a part of the body of Christ. Amen? How many of you know to be a part of the body of Christ requires you to be a part of this body of Christ and be a part of this family? And so this is the people that you get a chance to see on a regular basis. So if y'all see them struggling, if you see them and, and need a help, will you promise and will you dedicate yourselves and your family to reach out to them, to be a support, to be an encouragement, to pray for them when you see them going through hard times? If you do, say, I do. I do. I do. So as we've seen it before y'all, before them, and before the Lord, uh, we see this baby is going to be blessed. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we just thank you for this child. Lord, we thank you. And Lord, this is a blessing of the child. That, Father, she has strength. She has honor. And, Lord, she is not only beautiful on the outside, but, Lord, she is beautiful on the inside. And Lord, we thank you that she is anointed from such a young age to be able to follow you, to chase after you, and to love you with all of her heart. So Lord, I ask that you bless her and that you bring her to a place of understanding who you are in her life. So Lord, we love you, we praise you, we glorify you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. She is dedicated unto the Lord. She is beautiful, and we'll take her home. Y'all can come pick her up tomorrow. Amen. <laughs> Wait a minute, I wasn't bargaining on that. bad thing is you got to be careful what you offer. They may take you up on it. Amen? Because <laughs> my granddaddy always said, watch what you ask for. You just might get it. Um, most of y'all, while I'm getting ready, you know that I have two kids. I have two sons. I do not have any daughters. And I am waiting for the time that I get some daughter-in-laws in the appropriate time. Every, everybody say amen. The appropriate time. But I'm also waiting for the day that the greatest revenge that I've ever had will happen upon my children. And that will be the days that they have daughters that they can bring to Papa Stan's house. Amen? And you know what? Papa Stan is going to spoil the mess out of those children. How many of you know that it's the grandparents' right to be able to spoil their children? But it's a better thing to spoil the grandchildren. Why? Because you get revenge back on the children. So one of the things I want to be able to share with you this morning is we're going to be talking about maturity. And as we're talking about maturity, there's some things that I want to share with you that is near and dear to my heart. Because the baptisms today, we've got more than one baptism. We have got practically a whole generation of a family fixing to get baptized here in a little bit. And I don't know, to be honest with you, if I'm not going to be able to cry like a silly child during the process. Why? Because you see these children grow up and you see them become so much more than what they were. I look at that little child that we just uh, dedicated them to the Lord. Do you know that in 10 years from now, she's going to look a lot different than she does right now? And she's going to act a lot different than she does right now. Amen? So parents, get ready. Listen to me. Go ahead and get all the guns that you need because boys are going to start showing up at your house. We need to protect our little girls. We need to protect our little boys and our children. We need to let them know who God is in their life from the get-go. Amen? So as we look about maturity, I want to share this with you as we get started. Maturity is a path that we walk on with our, our road with Christ. I don't know about y'all, but I don't like walking. I think walking is a disgrace. I have a pickup truck. If I need to get there fast, I drive. Amen? And my wife says amen. And when I get on the road, I'll get in my way. If I want to walk someplace, I'm doing it for one or two reasons. Reason one is one, I want the exercise. 
and it's a choice. But if I want to get someplace and I want to get there fast, then I get in a car. But do you know whenever I walk, so many things happen because the Lord gets a chance to talk to me in the smallest of things. How many of you have seen the Lord appear to you, so to speak, in the little small things in life? How many of you have seen, you know, just when you're riding your horse or walking through the woods or going to deer camp or whatever, you see a rabbit run across the road and you're thinking, oh man, that's cool. Then all of a sudden, the word of the Lord speaks to you about something. And all of a sudden, the outstanding moments that God gets a chance to speak to you in the smallest of things. And maturity is the ability to be able to hear the voice of God speak. Uh, Carl, would you pray for me so I can get started this morning, please? Maturity is like a walk. It starts and it ends. How many of you have gone to a walking track somewhere at a park or a school and walked on the track before? Uh, the very first step that you take is the beginning point. And the point that you leave the track is the point that you end. They always say that the, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. And maturity is the same way. Uh, today, as we get ready for baptisms in a few minutes, I've always been confused of why people would find it so easy to want to get saved, to raise their hands, to pray the sinner's prayer, but they would hesitate to be able to get baptized. I've always struggled with that. Why is that? What is the problem that would say, yes, you can give your life to Christ, but yet it's a problem to be able to stand up and to make a public declaration of your faith in Christ? And you know, I remember when I got baptized, guys, I'm going to share a little story here with you. I hope to make you laugh. Um, and you notice that I am not a skinny person, and therefore I, I cause problems in places that I go. And the baptismal we had was not like what we have here. Uh, the baptismal we had was back above the stage and all that, and we had a set of electronic drums underneath where the baptismal area was. And you're the little glass window that's right there. And they were like swimming pools in those old you know, baptismal tanks. And as I started walking down the baptismal tank, all 285 pounds of me slipped on the first step. The water tank was pretty much full, so you could see the water level above the, the glass partition right there. And when I fell, it looked like Shamu down in San Antonio. Water splashed out everywhere, and it came out over the thing. And Russell, which was our drummer at the time at that church, he was sitting at the electronic drums. They were not real drums, they were electronic drums. And all of a sudden, not only did the water baptize him, but it baptized the drums. And my first thought, there was Pastor David, my pastor, was sitting at the tank, dripping wet from all over. And all I could do was come up out of it, and I felt so guilty that I did not remember that much of the process of getting baptized until I started walking back out of the tank and slipped again. <laughs> That's why we have a baptismal tub down here on the floor, amen? <laughs> we don't want to relive that problem. But I remember when I left, everybody came up here and slapped me on the back and everybody was congratulating me and saying, man, what a, what a great thing to witness uh, such a klutz get baptized, amen? <laughs> what I want to share with you this morning is it takes guts to be able to stand up and get baptized. Why? Because a lot of times it's, it's easy to recognize that we have a Savior named Jesus Christ and He's going to be our Savior, but it's really hard to be able to make a public declaration that He is my Savior and I will walk with Him and I am here to testify that I am here or I'm His publicly. Baptism is a special thing. Today I told everybody, we put the heater to the water and you know, when I got baptized that first time, there was no heater in that water. And do you know that when you go down in cold water, it makes a special experience. <laughs> you can't wait to get out of that water. I've said this before, when Rex got baptized, his water was so hot and it was outside in the cold. When he came up, he had all the steam coming off of it. Uh, prayer past church members at our old church looked and saw the picture on the internet and said, he must have been one bad dude. He was still smoking. <laughs> 
Amen. And Darlene said? Amen. <laughs> How many of you know that just because you get baptized doesn't mean that you're walking the perfect road at that point in time? It's just a beginning. These children and these people that are getting baptized here in a little bit, they're still going to make some mistakes. Amen. How many of you are still making mistakes today? How many of you made a mistake on the way to church this morning? How many of you cussed somebody? We're, we're going to have an altar call for you later, amen? But as we come up here to the church, I want you to understand there's not a single perfect person in this place. And you can't wait for perfection to come before you get baptized. Matter of fact, he wants you to know he'll take you just as you are. How many of you remember the old song that they used to sing at the Billy Graham Crusade you know, that loves you just the way you are? I don't know about y'all, but I, I know that Jesus Christ sees all of us just who we are. And so as we get ready to start this morning, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 13, please. Acts chapter 13. We're going to talk about the Apostle Paul, and we're going to talk about Barnabas for a few minutes. Because we're going to talk about them beginning their road with the Lord. Amen. Acts chapter 13, starting in verses 1 through 3. It says, In the church of Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simon called Niger, uh, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with the Herod, uh, the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and they sent them off. All right, guys, I want to share this with you. When you look into those first three, you're looking at a very true picture of what church was. You had a group of people that came together. How many of you know this building is nice, but this is not the church. You are the church. And wherever people come together to worship, there is the church. How many of you know that could be at a barn? That could be in a lake. That could be in your pasture. That could be in your living room. That could be in your house at the dinner table when you're doing Bible studies with your children. It can be at work during lunchtime when you're talking with other people. Church is not where you are at. It's what you are doing. You understand? It is not a location. It's an action. And how many of you realize that to be perfect is impossible? Just ask my wife about me. You know, I try to say that I'm perfect. And the only thing that I can say that I'm perfect at is being imperfect. I am a royal screw-up from the moment that I get up to the time that I go to bed. But you see, because of grace, the people that know me say, oh, that's just Stan. We know who he is. We know what he says. We know what he does. But let me tell you something. God looks at me and says, this is my servant. This is my child. And I love him in spite of his mistakes. How many of you have got some mistakes that you're dealing with and you're trying to perfect today? You want to try to find a way to become better. Let me tell you something. As long as you can say that, then you're being honest and recognizing who you are today. And I've seen these children grow up. I've seen them become something so much more and so much different. But you see, maturity begins in worship. And it says, while they were all there, they came together and they worshiped the Lord in fasting. And then, I want, to, I want you to underline the word then in your Bible. And then, the Holy Spirit spoke and separated them out. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you go into worship, worship is not a time where you come into church and you sing some little silly songs. Amen. Worship is a time that you come in and you expose your heart to this God that's greater than you. I, I'm not really smart when it comes to these things. I've been seeing these t-shirts and where it has all these little symbols, the ups and the downs and the graders. And I look at them and I scratch my head and I swear to you, I am not that bright. So when you're wearing a shirt, t shirt and I'm looking at you trying to figure out what it is, just explain it to me, all right? It'll be a lot less painful, a lot less problematic if you'll just tell me what it says because I don't understand certain things. My wife is the literary person in our church or in our household. She teaches English and reading and all these other things. Uh, she even has secondary uh, or, or English is secondary learning. Uh, to be able to teach people that don't know how to read, even in English. So she deals with it sometimes. For me, I can't even read English, and I've been in it for a long time. 
I speak redneck really well. And the reason that I know that is because that's what I am. I'm just a country boy. And God has to speak to me in a country boy way. How many of you know that God will speak to you in just who you are? If you're a business person, he's going to speak to you in a business way. If you're a country person, he's going to speak to you that way. If you're a city person, he's going to speak to you that way. Why? Because it's what you understand and it's what you know. And you know, some of the people that I do funerals for and weddings for, you know there's not much of a difference between a funeral and or a wedding. Amen? Oh, come on, work with me here. I'm going someplace. There's not much of a difference between a funeral or a wedding. Do you know what the difference between a funeral and a wedding is? That in a wedding, you're coming to the end of your life. And all of a sudden, the old person has to die. And then you have to become a new person. How many of you know that to be a follower of Christ means that you need to be married into the body of Christ? That means that you are a person who is going to become the bride of Christ. So we have to put off the old ways. And I do more marital counseling where I see people where they keep trying to live the single life when they get married. And how many of you know if you keep trying to be single when you're married, you're going to be single again real quickly. But when you realize that it's not about you and you start trying to become a team and you work together, then all of a sudden it makes it a little easier. Guys, do you understand that your faith, when we worship, you can't just worship individually. We need to worship together. And the thing that really saddens me about all these trials and tribulations we're walking through with the church, whether we can have church, whether we can't have church, whether you got to have masks, whether you can't have masks, I don't even know that the church was meant to be together. The church was meant to be whole. But yet it requires us to be whole individually before we're even with everybody else. I always tell everybody, if you're not completely happy and healthy with who you are, you're never going to be healthy and happy in a marriage. Because the other person will not be able to and cannot and does not have the ability and or strength to make you better. Only you can do that. If you got a bad spouse, you're going to be in a bad situation. If you got a good spouse, guess what? If you're not good, you're going to be in a bad situation. you got to start looking and say, who am I? And when we worship, all of a sudden we find the voice of the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Guys, you know that I'm a ordained to the assemblies. I believe in the spiritual gifts of God, but also believe in the practical gifts of God. How many of you know that God still talks to his people? Mark Green said one of the greatest things here a while back. Mark, kudos to you. Uh, his wife asked him, he said he heard the Holy Spirit. She asked him, what did he sound like? So he sound like me. Guys, there's a truth to that. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you, he's going to speak into you in a way that you know it's him. And how many of you realize that when you hear the Holy Spirit speak, you know that it was him? Why? Because you in your natural mind cannot hear what the Spirit thinks. And so when you get challenged, how many get challenged daily? When you get challenged with the word, all of a sudden you think, man, that can't be me. I would never think of that. I would never say I want to give this X amount of money to somebody or I want to pay for somebody's groceries. Most people want to get into Walmart and get out. Amen? They don't want to be looking around. How can they bless somebody else? So if you're in Walmart and a voice tells you in your own voice, hey, pay for that person's groceries. Guess what? It may be the Holy Spirit speaking to you. So the question is, will you listen to the Holy Spirit? Will you understand what he's saying? Maturity is so important. Let's look at verses 4 through 8. It says, the two of them sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia, and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. They traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos, where they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet, a fortune teller and magician. How many of you know there is no good in a fortune teller or a magician? And, so, and his name was Bar-Jesus, who was attendant of the proconsul, Sergius Paulus, the proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elimus, uh, the sorcerer, for that was his, that's what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the truth. Guys, I want you to understand something. The proconsul was a member of the government. 
And I want you to hear what I'm saying. We have got to get uh, the government understanding what the word of God says. And when the pro council, when government officials are looking for the word of God, we as ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ need to be speaking straight up to them to tell them what the word of God says. Amen? Amen. Oh, come on. Amen. Guys, we need to be speaking out against abortion. Amen? Amen? We need to be speaking out against homosexuality in the pulpit. Amen? Amen? We need to be speaking out against these things that separate us from the righteousness of God. Because if we agree to walk in that way or that fashion, how can we ever expect to be sent out? We've got to be separated. How many of you have heard God speak to you and encourage you about maybe getting out of your comfort zone? To leave the place where you always live to go see you do something that you've never done. Let me tell you something. Paul and Barnabas, they were put out on a trip and they were saying, go, I'm sending you. Let me ask you a question. Have you heard the Holy Spirit speak to you about going and sharing the gospel? Have you heard somebody saying, you know, you need to go up and talk to that mayor and you need to share with him? I don't know about y'all, but our mayor in Seattle, Washington, they need to know what the uh, summer of love is all about. Amen? <laughs> they need to understand that there is a love, but there's also a correction. How many of you know to be in the body, in the body of Christ I mean, is not always the easy thing? Sometimes there's discipline in the body of Christ, and sometimes there's discipline within ourselves. How many of you realize that you know when you're doing something wrong? How many of you know it? Like for me going back and getting a second brownie, I know it's wrong. But it's so good. <laughs> Your check will be in the mail tomorrow. <laughs> but you see, the Bible says that sinning is fun for a season. But you see, I believe that we're coming into a season in this nation that we need to change. I believe we're in a time where we need to be held accountable for what we're doing and what we're saying. I think that we need to hold our community accountable for the actions that it's taking. I believe that we need to hold individuals accountable for what they're doing. How many of you know wrong is wrong and right is right? There is no gray area, amen? In the gospel of Jesus Christ, there is no gray area. It's either right or wrong. What did Jesus say in Revelations? I wish that you were hot or cold. But because you're neither, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Guys, I hope you understand what this is all about today. This is a, an opportunity for you to be able to come along and understand who Christ is in your life. I want you to see that the people that turn to the magicians, the astrologers, and people that are in the black arts or magic, let me tell you something that's going to lead you down a road that's going to lead you straight to hell. And I believe that we don't talk about hell enough in church that we need to talk about it more and we need to understand what it is. And what is hell itself? It's a place that the righteous don't go to. Amen? How many of you realize that sometimes if we live in life and we make a mistake, we got to pay a price for it. Amen? And it's not easy to pay for a price. But let me ask you a question. Are you willing to live an eternal life for something that you're not willing to repent from and to change from? I don't know about y'all, but I know what I used to be like. I don't want that life anymore. I used to think that you couldn't be a Christian and have fun. How many of you know that's the biggest lie the devil ever told? And I'm going to challenge some of your thoughts. There are some things that the world does that we don't need to do. Well, to be honest with you, there's a lot of things the world does that we don't need to do. But I remember when Kay and I first started dating, there was a place over in Irving, Texas. And I want to challenge you to understand what righteousness is. One of the dates that me and Kay hit on, there was a Christian country and western dance club in Irving, Texas. And so we went there. And how many of you know, in itself, two-stepping is not such a bad thing. Now, guzzling a fifth of whiskey before you get on the dance floor, that's a bad thing. But we used to go there with church groups. And we used to walk in and there was an old closed-down bowling alley. And, man, you could bring your kids in and they could play video games, and they could have all sorts of fun. You could dance and be with your friends, and there was a time of righteousness and fellowship, and it challenged everything that we ever thought in the church. Because I remember the first time I went back to church, they told me, oh, you're dying and going to hell. You went dancing. <laughs> Somebody better tell David that. What did David do? David danced. Amen? 
They got jiggy with it. When Kay and I went dancing, we came back and got to know each other, but we did it in a godly way. We were around accountable people. We wasn't down here at the honky tonk partying it up, amen? And there was no bottles of beer in our hands. We were drinking Mountain Dew, amen? That was a good thing. I don't know about y'all, but I want to challenge you. There's some things that you think that you can only do in the world, but you can turn things around where it can still be righteousness and still walk with the Lord. You know, I heard somebody say that you can't be a cowboy and be a Christian. That's the biggest bunch of horse manure I've ever heard in my life. God is interested in the person. You know, your lifestyle is what you desire it to be. How many of you remember what it was like back in the 70s and 80s when all the kids were wearing parachute pants? <laughs> I used to laugh at them because I thought they were silly back then. But yet, me and my son was talking about them here a while back. Do you know, apparently it's in fashion now again. There are some things that ought not ever be relived. Amen? There are certain things we should never have to go back and redo over again. Besides, just because they make them for you don't mean that you should wear them. Amen? <laughs> Can you imagine Pastor Stan coming up in a size 42 pair of wind pants? <laughs> or, or parachute pants? No! How many of you remember the bicycle shorts back in the day? God forbid anybody would come walking in here with them. But you know what? If somebody did, we'd still love them, wouldn't we? Why? Because they're people. How many of you remember what it's like to have people laugh at you for something that you had no control of? You know there's people out there that need to have somebody look at them and say, we love you no matter what. Verses 9 through 12 says, Then Paul, who was also called, or Saul, who was called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elimus and said, You are a child of the devil and the enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. You will never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord. Now the hand of the Lord is against you and you're going to be blind. And for a time, you will be unable to see the light of the sun. Immediately, mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about seeking someone to help lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw that what had happened, he believed, for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. There are times when you are called of the Lord that you have to stand up and speak the truth. And you've you got to be able to call the devil out for what he is. Now, how many of you have seen the news here recently? We've had the Sahara dust thing that's been coming over here in the United States. There's been a red fog or a haze all over every place. I was telling my wife yesterday, if you're not from East Texas and you're coming and you're seeing all this foggy haze all over the place, this is not the beauty of East Texas right now. Amen? And it looks different. But can you imagine what it was like for that magician all of a sudden to have this mist about him where he can't see and he's groping about and all of a sudden, all of his things that he's leaned on, his black magic, his astrology, all of his things, it left him blind and dry. How many of you know that a Ouija board can't see that coming? But you see, it took a man of God to speak up and say, guess what? Your sin, your ways that have got consequences, and you will have to live according to them. And you will have to walk according to what you've done. And guess what? It happened. And what happened to the pro council, the government official? saw the truth and said, you know what? The Holy Spirit is on this man. The Holy Spirit is on this person. I want to hear more about God. Church, I want to encourage you, if you'll speak up for God and you'll start speaking the words of God and you will start standing up against the oppression that's coming against our government, how many of you know that our president of our United States needs our support right now? Our governor, God, he needs our support, our help right now. Amen? Our mayors, our council members, every single person that's in an elected place, they need your voice spoken for them. And some of you say, well, I'm not really happy with them right now. Great. Pray for them. Pray for them because they need prayer. They need to know that somebody is standing up for them and they're not by themselves. Guys, I want you to hear me. You may not like everything that's going on now. You may not be thankful for it. And I get it. I understand it. But do you understand we are coming in revelational times and we are seeing the return of the Lord Jesus coming soon. And guys, we're just in the beginning. You need to hear me. We're just in the beginning. If you don't believe it, break out your Bible and turn to the last book in the Bible and start going through Revelation. One of the things that we're going to do is 
as Rex said, we're going to have to close our church on Wednesday for just a little while. I can't get everything sanitized because of the people coming and going so much. We're going to start an online Bible study, and I'm going to get the information out to you so you can order it. This is the single best study of Revelation that I've ever seen in my life. It's tremendous. If you order it and get it in, you can go through it step by step, and it breaks it down. And as a person that's a minister of the gospel, been to seminary, been studying all this in my life, and all of a sudden I sat down and I started reading it, and all of a sudden I get convicted. Because some of the things that I've been taught throughout life is not exactly what the Bible says. And when you start looking at it word for word to see what it says, it's an eye-opening thing. Guys, listen to me. We may not have it tomorrow. Are you prepared for that? Are you prepared for not having a tomorrow? Church, I'm asking you a question. Are you prepared? No. And if you're not prepared, when do you get prepared? Is it tomorrow? Is it the day after? Is it next week? Why not now? Why not now? Why take a chance of seeing every eyeball on the face of the earth seeing Jesus coming back and you get left behind? Do you realize that there will be people in church that have been going to church faithfully all their lives and will still miss out on that day comes? Why? Because they truly don't understand who Jesus is, what he, what he is, and who he is. I remember one time I had to look at somebody and I had to call somebody out for something they did. And when you call somebody out, you better be prepared because let me tell you something, the enemy will swing at you. How many of you have been punched in your life? All you men, you've been to bars, you know what I'm talking about. Some of you have been punched, been kicked, been stomped. You have had horses walk all up on you. You've had cars run on you. You know what it's like to hurt. But do you know that what we're fighting is not a physical fight? Do you hear what I'm saying? What we're fighting right now is a spiritual battle. So when people say, yes, I can get saved, but I'm not quite ready to get baptized. But when will you ever be? It's like getting engaged but never wanting to get married. You see, if I give a ring to somebody, I have an expectation. We are getting married. Why? Because I want a family. And I want to have something that's righteous and something that's whole. I don't want to wait forever and ever. But yet, that's what we do with the Lord sometimes. When we get saved, but yet we're not willing to make that profession of faith. And so when we're looking at the spiritual battle, if you would, turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Guys, believe it or not, I am almost finished. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6. I want you to listen to this, and I want you to take this to heart. It says, for though we live in the world, how many of you are living in the world right now? I'm still here. I'm still paying public or county taxes for property, amen? I'm still here. But for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons that we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine powers to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. Now, when you look at this scripture, what does it say? One, we live in the world. This is the place that we are at this point in time. But it says the weapons that we fight with are not weapons of this world. Now listen to me. If you are gun nut, amen, brother, I am so with you. I am too. I believe in my Second Amendment rights. But listen to me. My Second Amendment rights are not going to get me into heaven. Some of you are looking at me and say, Pastor, you better be quiet. No, I'm fixing to speak a little louder. Your AR-15, your M-16, your MP3, whatever, I don't care. It's not going to get you into heaven. But you can be able to use it to protect your household. But let me ask you a question. Are you using the spiritual weapons? Are you praying? Or is it easier for you to ask somebody else to pray for you? I remember so many times, and I've used this before, 
when I'd get a phone call in the middle of the night and say, Pastor, my wife is in the emergency room. We had a car accident. We need you to come up there and pray for her. And I asked him, I said, well, have you prayed for her yet? No, I called you. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to turn my, my authority over to somebody else, what God has given me to defend my family. If my family's in a wreck, by golly, I'm going to be down on my knees and I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be praying hard. And why? Because my life depends upon it because that woman is my life. That woman has made my life so much easier and so much more of a blessing. She has given me children. Let me tell you something. She is worth fighting for. How many of you realize your children are worth fighting for? Your family is worth fighting for. Your home is worth fighting for. Your community is worth fighting for. Your church is worth fighting for. How many of you realize that there's a spiritual war going on for you today? And guys, let me tell you something. It's not cool to be able to say, yeah, I'm going to church on Sunday, but hey, next Saturday I'm going to go party. I'm going to throw out and have a cake party. Let me tell you something. you got to make a choice between the world and, or, the, or the spiritual realm. And let me tell you something. I am so much more accustomed to be in the presence of godly people, but I love to be with sinners. Let me tell you something. I love to preach here to you, but you know where I feel more comfortable? I feel more comfortable when I'm on a saddle in a trail ride with a bunch of drunks. Why? Because they will listen. Do you know that drunks will listen to a preacher? Where righteous people get upset with them. I remember the first trail ride that I went on up here in Nacogdoches. And it was sad because every single person in there was drunk. And that included the 12 year olds. They were high on Kool-Aid and sugar. And their parents were drinking and they were having a big time and they were throwing beer bottles and whiskey bottles everywhere. And I remember sitting there scratching my head thinking, why am I here? And the Holy Spirit kept saying, there are sinners here. And do you know that by the time that we got through with lunch, do you know that I had some drunk people that were falling off their horse coming over and asking me to pray for them? And you know what? I was so thrilled be able to drop the reins of my horse and walk over there and lay hands on a drunk and pray for him? Why? Because they heard every single word that I said. And you know what? They told me exactly every single word that I said about two weeks later when I bumped into them again. And you know what? I believe that God is calling the church to go into some of those places. Why? Because time is getting short. We don't have that much time left. Do you understand? We need to be making our professions of faith on an everyday basis, and we need to be able to stand up and say, Jesus Christ is my Savior. How many of you can be able to be proud and bold and say, Jesus Christ is my Savior? Yeah. You don't need bumper stickers to proclaim it. <clears throat> you need a tongue and you need lips, and you need the audacity to stand up and say, the devil, this is not your day today. Today is Jesus' day, as in every day. So I'm going to ask you this question as we look at these things. Are you fighting the spiritual battles with the spiritual gifts? Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon formed against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. Do you hear what I just said? No weapon formed against you will prosper. No weapon formed against you shall be able to overcome. What did Jesus say about his church? That the gates of hell would not overcome. So are you in the church or are you not? Listen to me. I'm not talking about Impact Cowboy Church. You see, we're just a local body. We're just a local place that people come. I'm asking you, are you in the body of Christ? Are you a part of the church? You see, I believe it's wrong when people say you can't take communion at church because you're not a member here. Let me tell you something. That is wrong. The communion was never for the church building. It was for the church body. How many of you know that a Baptist ought to be able to walk into a Pentecostal church and be able to take communion? How many of you know that a Pentecostal needs to be able to walk into a Baptist church and be able to take communion? Why? Because they are married to Jesus Christ. Are you a part of the body of Christ or are you not? That's the question. And you know what? You don't have to be special and you don't have to be rich. You don't have to be good looking. Because I don't match up none of those things. Amen? But I'm determined. And you know what? Even though I'm determined doesn't mean I'm perfect. And you know what? God knows the same thing about you. If he can use somebody like 
Rex Crenshaw, if he can use somebody that's like Marilyn. Let me tell you something. Me and Marilyn's had some conversation. How many of you know she's not a perfect woman? But you see, because the blood of Christ has been put over her, she is perfect in every way. Why? Because the blood of Christ covers her. Does the blood of Christ cover you? I'm going to ask that you bow your heads and close your eyes. And I'm going to ask this question. I want to make sure that you understand straight up who you are and what you're doing. If you are a man of your household, or if you're a leader of your household, if you're a single mom, I'm talking to the leaders of your households right now, whoever you may be. Are you leading your household in the ways that honor God? Are you willing to pray for your family? Are you willing to pray for your community? Are you willing to pray for the people that you work with? Are you willing to pray for those long lost relatives that you really don't ever want to see again? Are you ready to pray for them? And if you are the secondary person in the, in the family, are you willing to stand along beside the leader of the family and be able to proclaim the goodness of God? Are you willing to stand alongside as a co-heir, not somebody that's lesser than, but somebody that's equal to you, and be able to stand up and say, Lord, I pray along with my spouse. I pray along with my children. I pray along with my loved ones that your blessings be upon them, that your hand of protection. Now I'm going to ask you those, for those that maybe have never asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, I want you to hear me. According to the scriptures, we don't have much time left. And I may spend the next 40 years of my life preaching that we don't have much time left. But I'm going to preach it every day. Why? Because Jesus Christ is worthy. Is there anybody here that would say, Pastor, I've never asked Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior. And today, before I leave, I want to make sure that I know that Jesus is my Savior. If that's you, would you please raise your hand right now because I want to make sure that you do not leave here without asking Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Is there anybody here that would say, Pastor, today I've been a follower of Christ, but I've kind of gotten a little lackadaisical. I've kind of gotten lazy in my faith. And today is the day that I make a bold declaration that I stand up that I will follow the ways of the Lord and I will defend His word in my household, His word in my life. If that's you, would you please raise your hand right now because we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to get right because it may not be tomorrow. Thank you, Sarah. See you again. Anybody else? All right. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, I thank you that, Fathers, we listen to you and we worship you, Lord. That, Fathers, we worship you, that, Lord, we'll hear your voice. We'll hear you speak to us, Lord. Father, we'll hear you send us out to be able to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, for those that have sinned, that, Lord, have fallen short of the glory of God, Lord, there's no shame in that, Lord, because we know that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. But, Lord, you said that if we would bow to you, the Lord, that you would pick us up, that you would lift us up. Lord, we will bow to no other. Lord, we will only bow to you. We don't bow to causes. We don't bow to groups, but we bow to the Son of God. So, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name, that, Father, that your church should be a place where they're bold and can proclaim the truth, the word, and do it boldly, without hesitating, without fear, without being discouraged and intimidated. The Lord, your word says that, Father, that you would be with us even until the end of time. So, Lord, as your word says that you would never leave us nor forsake us, Lord, we take comfort in that. And, Lord, we ask that, Father, that you would bless each person here today. And Lord, as we get ready for baptisms here in just a second, Father, we ask that not, Lord, not only they get baptized in the in the flesh, but Lord, they'd get baptized in the spirit. That Lord, they would get set on fire, and Lord, they would be so encouraged, and Father, be so lifted up that when they make their declaration of their faith in you, that Lord, the world couldn't hold. Them. So Father, we thank you and we praise you and we glorify you in Jesus' mighty name. All God's people say. Jesse, Chase, you come on up here, please. Jason, would you come on up here? Oh, yeah. Yes. All right, so today I told you that with my back being out, I can't really bend over.
And I can't really lift anybody back up out of the water. Chase, if you'll get over there. Chase, if you'll get over there. Just do me a favor, give this man a hand clap. This is a big hand. Thank God I got one straight now. All right. All right, so it takes a big man to be able to come up here and be able to say that, you know what, I end my life as I was, and now I'm fixing to get into this uh, pool. And the Bible says that baptism, when we lay him down in the water, it's like going down into a grave. And when they come back, the old man that has died is down below, and then one new man rises. How many of you realize, family, y'all can come on up here if y'all want. You want to call your family? Y'all come on up. So as he gets ready to get in here, let me tell you how this works. He works with Jesse and he works with Chase. How many of you know that when you have influences like that, when you work with somebody, you're able to lead them to the Lord? Amen. So Jesse, would you like to be able to Well, this is my friend Jason Fields, Jack. Probably about three years you've been working with him. Three, three, four, three years. About three years. And uh what's going on here, can you? Yeah, no problem on anything. The wallet. <laughs> All right. Have a seat, bro. Uh, I've gotten known. He and I are pretty like minded. We're both goofy. We like to have a lot of fun. And, and Chase came to CAD too. And we all just kind of got to know each other. And I've gotten to know this man. This man. A grown man. And uh, I've grown to love him. Me and Chase, you know, we've, we've both kind of mentored him and, and talked to him about the Lord. And, you know, this is his decision. This is what he wanted to do. And so as a man, he's standing up and taking a stand for Christ. And I've gotten on him. I love him. And I know Chase loves him. And uh, we're going we're gonna to help him out. Would y'all lift your hands this way as we pray for him, please? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you that, Lord, as this man comes to you, Father, today is a day of maturity, is a decision to follow after you. And so, Lord, as he stands and he proclaims his uh, faith in you, Lord, because he is uh, asked, Father, to be able to be considered one of the called, one of the saved. Lord, one of the things that the Bible tells us and commands us to do is to get baptized. So, Father, we thank you that, Lord, as we get ready to baptize him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we now baptize now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. And everybody said, Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Greatest decision that you'll ever do. But here's the great thing about it. Because he got baptized, guess what? You get to hold him accountable. Amen? So if you see him messing up, what are you going to do? Hit him. <laughs> Wait. Someone says hit him. No, don't do that. Hit him with the truth of Jesus. Amen? All right, so we have a whole nother family that's back over there. That we're ready. Mom, Dad, and all everybody else. Y'all want to come on up here? Guys, once I get ready, we're going to hold this family. Amen? So we got a big family coming up. Uh, three ladies in particular that I've grown to love. It's my little sisters in Christ. Uh, they've all, there's four of them. Man. All right, y'all come on over. Come on over. Don't be scared. So uh, me and Pastor Stan met with these three ladies, Chesney Chandler and Presley. And I want to tell you ladies, I'm proud of you, and thank you for your profession of faith, and coming up here and being bold, y'all are being bold right now, every one of you, and I'm proud of y'all, so we're going to baptize y'all, this is a public profession of your faith in Christ Jesus, you're saying, hey, this is what God has done inside of me, so Emily, you come on first. About your name? Emily Jury. Emily Jury. She's a beautiful girl. She loves the Lord. And we're going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, your profession of faith in Christ Jesus. Because of your faith in Jesus Christ, and because you've asked to be able to be called one of His own, and you've decided that you want to follow after Him in baptism, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, 
watching this girl not just growing inches at a time but it seemed like a foot at a time uh -huh. and it seemed like when we came back after the church break where we weren't able to be in church here for a while all of a sudden i'm looking at what used to be a little girl and now is a young lady and i want to share something with you that i feel about you as i've been praying for you i really feel like god is fixing to take you into a place that you never thought possible and he's going to change a lot of things in your life and he's going to give you a heart just to be following after him and as your family adores you and loves you, and they would die for you, that you also have a Savior who did the same thing already for you. And he has a plan for you. And so whenever we baptize you, I believe that the Spirit of God is going to come upon you, and he's going to challenge you, and he's going to change you, that you're going to be witness in the schools that you go. You're going to be witnesses in the job that you have, and even in the family that you have. You're going to challenge them as well. But just because you're a teenager, you're going to challenge them. But yet, God is going to give you a spirit in you that is going to be an overcoming spirit. There will be nothing that will ever stop you. God blesses you. God loves you. And he died for you. He is so proud of you today. I can tell you that in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I baptize you in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Victim. Come on in here, girl. Why don't you tell everybody your name? Chesney. It's Chesney. It's mine. These two twins, we're, we're birthday twins also. We all have the same birthday, so not only are they twins, but I'm, I'm a twin with them. <laughs> birthday twins. So it is my pleasure to see you girls grow up and to follow Christ and to be obedient to his calling. All of you jury girls and all of you turner girls, man, y'all are just awesome. Love y'all. And so we're going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There you go. You ready? Jesus, we baptize you. Proud of you, girl. Have a seat. Love watching these kiddos. So we're going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ. Amen. Guys, I don't know about y'all, but I've seen an opportunity. I've seen God move in many ways. But how many of you know that God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Yep. Yeah. He is the God of families. He's the God of generations. How many of you realize today when you've seen a whole generation of that? So, family members, give them a hand. Shout out to all y'all. And while we're at the stand, if there's anybody else, we got some warm water right here. If you feel the Holy Spirit moving inside of you, you've been saved, and you're feeling, hey, I want to do that. Come on with it. No pressure, but come on. We've actually had people in blue jeans and boots and everything else in between. So today is your day. If not, call me sometime. But if you made the profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the next thing you do is you get baptized. It's a very important thing. 
family members because he is the God of all generations. Y'all have probably been a very good witness to your children, your grandchildren, and they've seen God move in your family. So I'm going to tell you, job well done. The way to bring your family into the Lord and bring a place where they understand who he is and their right. So let me bless y'all. Anybody else before we close out? Today is your day. It's warm water. Next time may be cold. <laughs> Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for each person that's here today. And Father, we celebrate, Father, with each person. Lord, we ask that, Father, to be a blessing to find each household. Father, we thank you that, Lord, as we came in together as a church, Lord, we leave together as a church. Father, we never, we never leave your spirit. Father, your word says that you would be with us even until the end of time. So, Lord, we rejoice in that. So, Lord, I bless these people today. Father, as we send them out, just as you sent out your apostles, Father, be able to proclaim the goodness of God. Lord, I ask the Father that you would do the same with them. Lord, they are blessed in their comings, their goings. Father, they are the head and not the tail, they're the top and not the bottom. Lord, they're blessed in all their ways. Father, blessed in all the words. They're blessed in their homes. They're blessed in their health. They're blessed in their children. They're blessed in their finances. They're blessed in their health. They're blessed in their businesses. Lord, their crops and their herds are blessed. And Lord, everything they do and say, Father, is always for your influence and for your kingdom. So, Lord, as we send them out, Lord, we ask that, Father, that you would turn around and send them exactly where you would want them to go and let them speak what you would want them to speak. These are your people, Lord. So, Lord, we commend them back to you. In Jesus' mighty name. All God's people said? Amen. Amen. Let's give them a hand.